Welcome back to another episode of 816 Outdoors. Today I'm going to show you how I tie my favorite bluegill fly. So I'm not sure if this has a name or not, but this is kind of something I combined a couple things with and came up on my own. It's super, super simple, so I'm sure that there's something already out there for it. I just don't know what it is. So I started off using a size 10. I got these hooks off of Amazon. They're great. Haven't had any issues with them. So I got a bunch of them. Size 10 is what I find works best. Size 8 is a little too big. And you can get away with size 12, but it's kind of small and hard to tie. And also, when the fish eat it, sometimes they swallow it and it's really tough to get. Okay, so I put my hook in my vise, and now I need to start putting some thread on. I use orange thread because I like the way that I can see it and it makes finishing them really easy. I start by tying a jam knot right in the middle of the hook shank, and I kind of end it right in the middle where I start. I take my scissors, cut off this tag end. Now this next step is something you don't have to do, but I like to do. I take a small piece of lead wire and I put it right along the hook shank. I like that because it allows my fly to drop a little bit easier. And now I'm ready to put the rest of my fly together. So I always start with the piece that goes at the end or the piece that's at the bottom. And that's going to be my marabou. And I'm using just white right now. Ideally, I would use yellow. Yellow is one of my favorite colors to use on these because they like eating those little bugs. And yellow seems to be a popular color on those bugs, especially in the summer. There's the lightning bugs. So I also have this green that kind of works as a yellow since I don't have yellow. And the place where I usually get my stuff, Rogers Sporting Goods, didn't have any when I was there last. This part is important. You don't want too much at the end. So what I usually do is measure out half a hook shank. So that's about half right there, hanging off the edge. And then I start off kind of loose and tighten it up. So then I pull it up and cut off the rest. Before I put my next piece on, I take my thread and go back over and kind of cover up the end of those feathers. Next, I get a piece of chenille about two inches long. Two inches seems to work pretty good for this size 10 fly. I attach one end, and one thing that I've noticed and learned is you always want to attach it with the long end on the outside here, not towards the head of the hook, but towards the back. The reason for this is when you fold it back over, it makes a nice clean edge around the outside. So I secure that all the way on there, and then I make a couple more wraps and bring my thread to the front of the hook. So now it's at the front. Now is an important step. I have to wrap my chenille around. I do lots of tight wraps, making them as small as possible and super tight. This makes my fly more durable and a better presentation. As I get towards the end here, I take my thread, wrap it underneath there, and secure the end. Before I make too many wraps, I want to cut off this tag end, just like that. One reason I like using this color thread is because it makes the head of the hook super easy to make red, or orange in this case. I really like having a red, red head at the top. Fish seem to love that. So rather than putting some red dubbing on there, which this I made myself, really cool, you guys should definitely try to make some dubbing yourself super easy and cost effective as well. But rather than putting the dubbing on, I'm able to just make a couple more wraps and that gives it the red color at the top. Now that I have the red at the top, I have my white tail and my black body. The black body is important because that's what most of the food that the fish eat is looking like. A lot of it is black. And even if they don't see the white or the red, they see that little black bug just sitting there and they love to come up and nip at it. So now I'm going to do one little overhand knot just to secure it so it's not sliding all over the place. So usually I actually do two. I'll do two overhand knots. And then I whip finish it. And after I whip finish, I usually do one more overhand knot just for some extra security. These flies get beat up and... Could just be that I'm not 
a great fly tire yet, but after a couple of fish, sometimes they start looking a little rough. So I do a couple more overhand knots to secure that head. I actually found out that I can use fingernail polish. This is just clear fingernail polish I stole from my sister, and I can use that as head cement. The reason I found this out is because I was trying to use my head cement. I left it open one time, it got really hard. So I got head cement thinner, used that, still wasn't really happy with it. I looked it up, found out I could use this, and it works great. I really like the brush that's on there. It makes it super easy to apply. So I apply a pretty thick coat of it on there. It does have a strong smell, but so does regular head cement. And the key to this is making sure you do not cover up the hole. Otherwise you won't be able to fit your line in there. So I do quite a bit on the top, and then I also do a small bit underneath here. Now, I just let that dry. It takes a little bit, so usually I do this at night, and then the next morning they're ready to go. And this right here is the finished product. All you have to do is tie your tippet on the end there, cast it out there, and Bluegill will love it. Thanks so much for watching another episode of 816 Outdoors. If you like this type of video and want to see more, maybe how I tie my streamers for catching bass and maybe some trout flies, make sure to let me know in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you on another episode of 816 Outdoors. God bless.